Buenas tardes a todos. Siente a no hablar español. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Controversia TV for uh, inviting me here in uh, Chile. Uh, so I have the opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you. I'm going to speak uh, English, as I already said, but uh, I will do it as slowly as possible so everybody can hopefully understand. First of all, I would uh, like to uh, start my uh, presentation uh, with the words of the leader of uh, a Belgian Muslim organization. His, uh, the name of this guy is uh, Abu Imram. And he said in an interview, he's now in jail uh, for many years, I hope, but he's now in jail uh, as leader of a terrorist organization. And he said some years ago, we won't rest until Europe has become an Islamic State, and then we will march on towards the White House and the Vatican, and we will carry out the promise of our Prophet Mohammed. Uh, dear friends, Abu Imram is uh, unfortunately not just an isolated uh, nutcase. He is the leader of an organization who sent uh, more than 100 Belgian Muslims to Syria to fight with Islamic uh, State and al-Nusra and al-Qaeda. Members of uh, this organization of Sharia for Belgium were responsible for the, the Paris and the Brussels terrorist attacks with uh, more than 130 people who were killed. And at this moment, Western civilization uh, faces extension because of mass immigration, because of multiculturalism, and because of Islamization. And it was uh, already in 1974 that the former um, Algerian uh, president, Houare Bomidien, uh, prophetically addressed the General uh, Assembly of the United Nations. Um, and he said at that moment, one day, millions of men will leave the Southern uh, Hemisphere to go to the Northern Hemisphere. And they will not go there as friends because they will go there to conquer. And they will conquer it with their sons, the wombs of our women, will give us victory. And Bomidien's prediction is steadily becoming a truth. And since uh, the first non-European immigrant workers entered Europe in the 1960s and 70s, the number of third world immigrants on European soil has increased rapidly. Through family reunification, marriage uh, migration and the asylum procedure, each year about uh, two million non-European fortune seekers obtain a residence permit for the European Union. In 2015, more than one million asylum seekers entered Europe. And on top of legal immigration, there is also a massive problem with illegal immigration. The European Parliament report estimated that between 5 and 8 million illegal aliens reside already in the European Union. And more than 50 million Muslims live in Europe already. And governments all over the West have lost their grip on immigration. And the political elite refused to call a halt to immigration, to eliminate abuses of the system, and to take firm measures against illegal immigrants and aliens because of naivety, because of the fear for being accused of racism or a shared leftist ideological agenda. And there is no longer a such thing as controlled immigration. The immigration stream has become an immigration invasion 
a mass phenomenon that is replacing the indigenous population, all too often with cultural maladjusted immigrants. If we do not tighten our immigration laws, the mass immigration of today will just be the tip of the iceberg. And right now, Europe is confronted by a wave of two million immigrants every year. And within a few decades, this could turn into an uncontrollable tsunami of tens of thousands and millions of fortune seekers every year who are willing to do whatever it takes to set foot on the European El Dorado. And the next generations of Europeans, our children and grandchildren, will have to fight for the survival of our Western culture. And these existential problems are not new in Europe. The foundations of our European civilization were led more than two years and 2,000 years ago by the ancient Romans and Greeks and were under pressure already several times throughout our history. Dear friends, the classical civilization of Greece and Rome collapsed because of exactly the same problems as the ones Europe is facing at the moment. There are clear parallels between what happened then and is now happening in my home country, in my continent, in Europe. Greece and Rome underwent, just as Europe currently, demographic decline, alienation, social decadence and division. And if we don't wake up, pay attention and take action against these lethal influences, soon the European civilization will come to an end. And if we are not aware of the fact that we have to change our attitudes, it will come to an end. As soon as individualism, mercantilism and materialism take the upper hand and there is no longer respect for law and order nor for the traditional values of our European civilization, our civilization ends. And currently there is a growing flow of people from Africa and from the Middle East and from Northern Africa who are coming towards Europe. Multiculturalists claim that migration is a sort of a human right and that allowing mig migrants into Europe is a human gesture. They lose sight of the fact that it is simply impossible for Europe to help the approximately 2.2 billion people in the world who live in poverty today. This would have a devastating effect on the European society and our social system would immediately collapse. Two millennia after Greece and Rome, the illusion of multiculturalism is again on the verge of destroying a civilization. The delusions of world citizenship and multicultural play an important role in the decline of Europe and our civilization. Europe's Europeans are obligated, immersed in a multiracial, multicultural. In Europe, the prevailing leftist political elites and politicians have contempt for every reference to identity. And it is a political taboo in Europe to confirm your European and Western identity. And the multicultural ideology assumes that different civilization standards and levels can live peacefully together, can live peacefully with each other on the same territory. However, history has already proven many times that this always leads to bloody clashes after which one culture, the dominant one, gets the upper hand over the weakest. Currently, there are several similar bloody conflicts in the world, from Malaysia to Rwanda, from the Balkan to South Africa. And dear friends, while immigration and a very high birth rate cause the number of non-European immigrants in Europe to rapidly increase, 
Europe is on the verge of extinction. With the exception of Albania, which consists mainly of Muslims, not a single European country has a birth rate that is high enough to maintain the population. The native European trends to a half within less than 50 years. And because of the continuously growing immigration streams towards Europe and the high birth rate amongst immigrants, the ethnic composition is dramatically changing. In Germany, one out of seven of the 82 million inhabitants is from foreign descent. 16% of France population is from foreign descent. In the United Kingdom, one of nine people is born abroad. In the Netherlands, one out of five people is from foreign descent. In Belgium, my country, one-sixth of the population consists of immigrants. Brussels, the capital of Europe, already consists for 70% of immigrants, a percentage that will rise to 85% in 2020. In my own city of Antwerp, the second city of Belgium, 40% of the population is from foreign descent, and by 2020, this will be 55%. In my hometown, in Antwerp, 52% of the school children in primary schools are already Muslims. This mass immigration negatively affects European societies. Rising crime, immigrant riots in European cities, major white urban exodus out of neighborhoods that are dominated by immigrants, the import of barbarian practices like forced marriage, honor killings, the ritual slaughter of animals, and female mutilation, a decrease of the level of education, a growing number of unemployed immigrants in our cities, and increasing government expenses. This is not surprising. You can't have a first world country with a third world population. And the Western world is being invaded not by an armed militia, but by millions of pauperized immigrants. The growth through immigration is three times higher than the national growth by birth. While the native European population shrinks, there is still an enormous population growth in the third world countries. While 60 years ago, there were three times as many Europeans as there were black Africans, there are now already more black Africans than Europeans. And according to predictions, by 2030, for every European, there will be almost two black Africans. At the current pace, the population of black Africa will amount to one billion, one billion by 2017 and to 1.3 billion by 2030. If Europe does not stand up to the immigration invasion, and install a strict immigration policy, the European, the European population threatens to be overrun by a tsunami of pauperized third world immigrants. Their friends, another threat Europe faces is the possible Turkish accession to the European Union. In 1987, Turkey applied for EU membership. At first, Greece, pronounced it veto, but stopped its resistance in 1999. And ever since, Turkey has been an official candidate member state of the European Union. And since 2005, the EU has been negotiating with Turkey of a possible accession. Granting Turkey the membership to the European Union would be a fatal mistake. And on January, on January the 1st, 2010, the 27 member states of the European Union counted a total of 501 million inhabitants. The accession of a non-European Muslim country with almost 80 million inhabitants is pure madness. During hundreds of years, Europe has to protect its eastern borders against Turkish and Ottoman imperialism. It wasn't until the 19th century that Southern Europe was almost completely freed from the Turkish Ottoman invaders. If Turkey would gain EU membership, the European gates would be opened again 
for the ancient hereditary enemy. If Turkey would become a member of the European Union, this would not only provoke an additional mass immigration of millions of people, but it would also imply that a powerful Islamic country and state can influence European policy. Furthermore, it is important to note that since 2003, Turkey is being governed by Islamic fundamentalists. Turkish uh, Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan showed his true face when he said in 1997, mosques, he said, are our barracks, domes or helmets, minarets or bayonets, believers are our soldiers, unquote. And he also said, democracy is like a train. We shall get out when we arrive at the station we want. In the 80s and the 90s, we were pleased to witness the fall of communism in Europe. In Western Europe, however, communists have now turned into so-called anti-racist. The anti-racist struggle, the multicultural struggle, has now replaced the communist class struggle. Immigrants and other so-called minority groups have replaced the working class proletariat. In recent years, the working class changed political sides. The left-wing parties, however, embraced the immigrant population. In recent years, we see that they are now the representatives of this third world population who came to Europe. And eventually, the objectives of communism and multiculturalism are the same. Both strive for the equality of cultures and people and want to create a new deep type of human that is no longer determined by its cultural environment, but raised according to multicultural principles. The anti-racist struggle has replaced the proletarian revolution, while discrimination has become the surrogate for the repression of the working class. These discriminated minorities, of course, need to be emancipated, have to be raised and especially undergo multicultural brainwashing. And after the Soviet Union collapsed and the terrible crimes that took place during communist rule were revealed, this ideology lost its credibility and the new left made use of the immigration problems to dress communism up as something new. In order to weaken our Western civilization, several guilt complexes are being cultivated for many years now. Racism, violence, anti-Semitism, slavery, colonial, colonialism, and xenophobia are represented as the West's and Europe's original sins. For this reason, the European people have lost their right to a proper identity culture and way of life. And the European nation states are harmful anachronism and respons responsible for everything that goes wrong in this world. The multicultural ideology has become some sort of a new religion with the equality of cultures as greatest and most important dogma. The cure for this European disease is obvious. Open the gates of Europe for the pauperized masses from the third world countries. Mass immigration as a sort of Wiedergutmachung, as they say in Germany, for colonization. Our society needs to be reprogrammed according to multicultural prescriptions. Institutional racism needs to be tracked down and eliminated. And the entire population has to be re-educated to make them more politically correct. Meanwhile, Multiculturalism and mass immigration has become a sort of a Trojan horse of Islamization. Millions of Muslims and their families, already 50 million, came to live in Europe, while multiculturalism encourages Islam and under the guise of freedom of religion, put it on an equal terms with European religion, with Christianity. And their friends, Islam is taking over Europe. It is the fast-growing religion on the old continent. While Western Europe 
counted between 1 and 2 million Muslims in the 1960s. This number has risen to more than 50 million today. Mosques and Quran schools flood our cities. Islamic customs and symbols from ritual slaughter and headscarves to Islamic holidays are authorized, made official, and threatened equally as the traditions of our European and Christian civilization. More and more headscarves and jalabas pop up in the streets of every major European city. And I, when I was uh, strolling around here in Santiago, Chile yesterday and today, I thought this city is a more European city than Brussels or Paris or Berlin or Madrid at this moment. Neighbors and districts turn into Islamic ghettos where there is no sign of integration, let alone assimilation. And the Islamization is a new form of colonization that steadily changes Europe into Eurabia. Islam is Europe's most important and oldest enemy. Islam is a religion of conquest that tried two times to subjugate Europe. The first invasion took place in the seventh century. Spain, Portugal, and even the south of France were conquered and occupied by Islam. It was until 732 that uh, Charles Martel stopped the march of Islam in Poitiers in France. And it would last another 800 years, eight centuries to drive away Islam from the southern part of Europe, out of Spain. And the Crusades were actually not offensive wars, no crimes against Islam, it were defensive wars in order to prevent a new Islamic invasion. Be aware of the fact that majority of Northern Africa at that time belonged to the old Roman Empire and that cities like uh, Constantinople, now Istanbul, were Christian cities where the Pope resided at that time. And the Reconquista came to an end in 1492 when the last Islamic troops fled from Granada, from Spain, towards the other side of the Mediterranean Sea where they belong. And in the 15th century, when the Ottoman Turks attacked Europe from the east this time, our continent was besieged a second time. This second invasion was stopped at the gates of Vienna in 1683. And today, Europe is under attack again. The third Islamic invasion is taking place as we speak with terrorist attacks in Madrid, in London, in Paris, in Brussels, in Berlin. And this third Islamic invasion isn't about real warfare. Of course, there is a terrorist threat. However, more disturbing is the ticking demographic time bomb. For more than 40 years, millions of Muslims peacefully overrunning Europe. And through mass immigration, conversion, propaganda, and most important, family reunification, Islam is marching on in Europe. The world's Muslim population is expected to increase by 35% in the next 20 years, rising from 1.6 billion in 2010 to 2.2 .2 billion in 2030. It is estimated that about 18 million Muslims live legally in Western Europe and 50 million in the whole of Europe. And we're taking the number of illegal aliens into account. Western Europe, let's say the European Union, counts more than 20 million to 25 million Muslims already. In Eastern Europe, a similar revolution is taking place in the whole of Europe. Russia included, there are officially more than 50 million Muslims, as I said already. And projections show that the Muslim share of the European population is expected to grow by nearly one-third over the next 20 years, from 50 million now to 73 million, 75 million in 2030. Worldwide Islam will be the first religion within a few decades. At this moment, 24% of the world populations are Muslims and 31% are Christians. In 2060, 32%
will be Muslims and only 31% will be Christians. And, as I said already, Islam will be the first religion in the world. Dear friends, be aware of the fact that Islam behaves like a predator. It only attacks weak praise. And Europe is weak. Europe is weak because it is on the verge of extinction, losing its identity and culture and becoming an economical giant on clay feet. Europe, Europe is not only committing demographic suicide, but is terrified to defend the norms and values of European civilization of Christianity. Just like AIDS affects the psychical resistance of human beings, multiculturalism affects the identity and demographic resistance of a people and a civilization. Islam takes advantage of our weakness and behaves like a cuckoo that lays its egg in the warm European nest. And we Europeans are unsuspectingly hatching this cuckoo egg and will eventually be cast out of our own nest. And because of multiculturalism, Europe stays blind for the threatening danger of multiculturalism and Muslim fundamentalism. Since the 80s, several extremist groups have infiltrated Europe. Government and security agencies never interfered. And this way, European nations allowed a fifth Islamic column to come into existence on European soil. These extremist organizations not only plan terrorist attacks on European soil, but also spread fundamentalist ideas among the growing Muslim communities in Europe. And it's not surprising that the attacks in New York, the attacks in Madrid, in London, Paris, Brussels, Berlin, Stockholm, and in my own capital, Brussels, as well as many failed terrorist attacks for every committed succeeded terrorist attacks, there are at least four who failed, where the work of Muslims of the second generation who lived already in Europe, who were French, Belgian and English inhabitants, who had Belgian, France and English passports, who lived in Europe for one or two or three generations. Dear friends, Europe is at war. We are at war with Islam. Over the past three years, 27 Islamic State successful terrorist attacks, IS attacks, were committed in Europe. More than 100 were prevailed. 451 people were killed and more than 1,500 were wounded during these terrorist attacks in Europe. And most uh, Muslim extremists, however, do not commit terrorist attacks, but conduct their jihad through conversion, through infiltration, through agitation, intimidation, and undermining Western civilization. They help Islamic State, they help fundamentalist organizations, and they all support them in their minds. Rejecting terrorism isn't a question of principle in Islamic circles, but a question of tactics. And meanwhile, the Muslim enclaves in Europe cities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The authorities can hardly maintain control over these areas. Fundamentalist Muslims use these Muslim ghettos as a beachhead for the conquest of our entire European society. This ghetto strategy, because it is a strategy, allows the fundamentalists to control the Muslim community and apply the Sharia the Islamic law system. They are supported by the Gulf states, countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and others with a lot of money and with all sorts of facilities. And the democratic rule of law is replaced by an Islamic rule in those ghettos based on the Sharia in the suburbs of Paris where riots often take place, even last night. There were a lot of riots Paris and two police officers were killed once again. There are more than 700 no-go zones according 
to official instances. Zones where the French authorities, where the French police, even the army, has almost completely lost control. And these ghetto communities are breeding grounds for Muslim terrorists, for Islamic State, for Al-Qaeda, and beachheads for Islamic fundamentalism. Dear friends, the cowardly refusal of the elite to defend our own culture and, and civilization or to propagate our identity has become the Achilles heel, not only of Europe, but indeed of the entire West. And let me give you some examples of the multicultural policies in my country and in other European countries. Cultural events and activities by and for minority groups, groups are sponsored and supported. Affirmative action in education and in labor market is encouraged. The teaching package in schools are extended to lessons in minority religions, particularly Islam. The food habits, the halal food habits, of minority cultures and religions is accommodated in institutions such as schools, hospitals, armed forces, police and prisons. Absenteeism of minority pupils, mostly Muslims, due to religious or other special days related to their culture or religion is tolerated and made official. Minorities are helped to continue to use their own languages rather than them giving to adapt and learn the language of the host country. Christian and European symbols like a cross or a Christmas tree, decorations who resemble to Christian symbols are um, taken away in order not to offend certain minority groups. The supporters of multiculturalism are in control of the social debate. This is not a surprise. They already control the European politics and media. Dear friends, I'm aware that in recent years, also Chile's econom economic growth and stability have made it an attractive destination for other Southern Americans and also for migrants from Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Haiti, to immigrate to Chile. Nevertheless, immigration to Chile remains very low, very low, believe me, proportionally compared to other developed countries and to European countries. Although immigration to Chile is low, I have the impression that Chile's outdated immigration laws are responsible for importing the same problems as we know already in Europe, like delinquency, drug trafficking, and organized crime. And in Europe, a secularized post-European culture is facing a fast-growing Muslim community. South America, unlike secular Europe, has remained rooted to a larger extent in traditional Christian values. And I do not doubt that this, if these values continue to decline in South America, also your country risks to be within some decades to be in the same situation, in the same position as Europe is today. However, I think that Chile and Southern America learn from the ongoing European catastrophe and avoid a similar fate. Let this be a call to you to protect and preserve your Western and Christian values and to control your borders. Dear friends, in Europe, we have to make a clear choice. Keep on undergoing the mass immigration, invasion, and Islamization, or resist. Protecting our national identity, protecting our cultural singularity, protecting our European and Christian identity does not imply that we must seclude ourselves from all other cultures and external influences. Gradual and controlled interaction is the way ahead. And accordingly, the admission of a limited, and I stress on the word limited, number of migrants may be beneficial. It should be clear that the pursuit of ethnic purity is out of the question. But so too, for any realistic person, is the present disastrous shambles in which genuine cultural interaction is being replaced by a third world invasion and even Islamic expansionism. The motto of today's Western rulers may be diversity, 
But in practice, many different and often clashing cultures are forced into coexistence on the same territory. The West needs to regain its fighting spirit and a Western Renaissance is only realistic if we get out of the multicultural, multicultural straight, straight jacket, renounce cultural nihilism, get back our identity and cultural uniqueness, and dare uh, to recognize the superiority of our Western civilization. In this context, it is regrettable that countries take, that are part of our Western and European civilization often seek to damage or even destabilize our countries of this community for the sake of their own short-term interests. The peoples belonging to our European civilization, Europe, United States of America, South America, Canada and Russia, must work together in order to defend and secure our common identity and our common European heritage. And there, friends, the problems of Europe are also the problems of the West and even the problems of South America. In order to save our Western, European and Christian civilization, we need to regain control over our borders and stop the immigration invasion. And the immigration policy needs to be based on the social and cultural safety of our Western and Christian civilization. It is time to stop the renunciation of our own identity. How can we expect immigrants to adjust to a society that we disrespect ourselves? How can we expect immigrants to try to fit into a society that is, according to multiculturalists, racist? How can we expect immigrants and Muslims to assimilate, not integrate, but assimilate, to a culture that does not believe in and stand up for its own Christian values? Different what we need and what we first need is a strict immigration policy. People who want to start new lives in our countries, in Europe, but also over here, must first show that they bring skills and attitudes that will make a positive contribution to our society. Secondly, the West must start a civilizational moral offensive based on the foundations of our greatness, Rome, Greece, Christianity, and real humanism. These are the common European values, the common Western values we all share and have to be promoted. Foreigners wanting to settle here must show loyalty to their ghost society and the principles of our civilization. And they must know that they have to adjust to our way of living and not the other way around. Their friends, I conclude. My father used to tell me a story when I was still a child. He told me that he named me Philip after Philips van den Elsas. And Philips van den Elsas, who was this guy? He was the king of Flanders during the 13th century in Europe. And he was one of the leaders of the Third Crusade to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem. And the legend says that he brought home to Europe from the Holy Land, from Jerusalem, the symbol of the black lion, the flag you see there on the slide, the symbol of the black lion on a golden field after fighting a Sarazin Muslim knight. And his motto during this crusade was pro defensio Christianitatis, his Latin to say to defend our Christian and European heritage. Let the motto of the King of Flanders, the leader of the Third Crusade to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem of the, in the 13th century, in the Middle Ages, be also our message today. Pro Defensio Christianitatis, to defend our common European and Christian civilization, our common European and Christian heritage. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>